In today's video, we're going to discuss all of the unique and leveled armor pieces that can be found in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. These items can be found either in the base game, the Knights of the Nine DLC, the Shivering Isles DLC, or only through accessing console commands. We're going to make sure that most of these armor pieces are unique and one-offs, however, some items with multiples were interesting enough to where I thought they would make great additions to this list. We'll include all pieces that can be worn and equipped, minus any jewelry pieces, as those will be for a separate video. Beginning with unique armor, we have the full armor set of Bruce F. Emelian. This armor is all light armor and can be found in the Emelian family tomb northeast of Leowin. The set contains Brusef Emelian's boots with an armor rating of 3, the Kyrus with an armor rating of 8, and Enchantment of Frost Shield for 6%, the Gauntlets with an armor rating of 3, the Greaves with an armor rating of 4, the Helmet with an armor rating of 3, and the Shield with an armor rating of 8. The entire set has a value of 985 gold. The next full set is the Imperial Dragon Armor. This armor set is rewarded to the player after fully completing the main quest of the base game. We have the option to pick either light or heavy armor. The boots have an enchantment of resist frost for 20% and offer an armor rating of 5 for heavy and 3 for light. The cuirass has an enchantment of resist magic for 11% and offers an armor rating of 12.5 for heavy and 8 for light. The gauntlets have an enchantment of resist poison for 11% and offer an armor rating of 5 for heavy and 3 for light. The Greaves have an enchantment of Resist Fire for 20% and offer an armor rating of 7.5 for Heavy and 4 for Light. Then finally, the Helmet has an enchantment of Resist Shock for 20% and an armor rating of 5 for Heavy and 3 for Light. The Heavy Armor set has a value of 5,815 gold and the Light Armor set has a value of 5,060 gold. The next full set is the Shrouded Armor. This armor is worn by members of the Dark Brotherhood and is awarded to us upon joining the faction. The armor is considered light and only comes with two pieces, the shrouded armor itself which is the full body suit and the shrouded hood. The body piece has enchantments of fortify sneak, illusion, marksman, blade, and acrobatics for 8 points. It also has an armor rating of 15. The shrouded hood has enchantments of fortify sneak, illusion, marksman, blade, and acrobatics all for 2 points. It has an armor rating of 2.5. The shrouded armor set cannot be sold for any amount of gold. Then we have the Umbra's Ebony Armor Set. The full set is worn by Umbra and can be acquired by defeating her and looting it off of her for the Clavicus Vile Daedric Shrine Quest. It is heavy armor and has no enchantments. If you're past level 15, the boots have an armor rating of 6, the Curus has an armor rating of 15, the Gauntlets have an armor rating of 6, the Greaves have an armor rating of 9, the Helmet has an armor rating of 6, and the Shield has an armor rating of 18. Combined, the full armor set has a value of 7,600 gold. Next we have the Pit Armor Set. The Pit Armor Set can only be acquired through the testing hall of the game. These were likely meant to be an apparel option for the arena. It is a light armor set, the boots, cuirass, gauntlets, greaves, and helmet all have an armor rating of 0, no enchantments, as well as a value of 0 gold. Then we have the Blackwood Company Full Armor Set. The Blackwood Company armor set can be acquired by looting members of the Blackwood Company during the Fighter's Guild questline. It is a heavy armor set and has no enchantments on any of the pieces. The boots have an armor rating of 5.5, the Curus has an armor rating of 13, the Gauntlets have an armor rating of 5.5, the Greaves have an armor rating of 8, the Helmet has an armor rating of 5.5, and the Shield has an armor rating of 15.5. Combined, the set has a value of 1,350 gold. Next, we have the Crusader's Relics. The Crusader's Relics are acquired by completing the various quests included in the Knights of the Nine DLC. All relics come in the form of either heavy or light armor. These are the stats if the player is level 16. The boots have the enchantment of Fortify Restoration for 5 points. The light armor rating is 4 and the heavy is 6. The Curus has enchantments of Fortify Health for 24 points, Fortify Restoration for 5 points, and resist normal weapons for 15%. The light armor has an armor rating of 10, and the heavy is 15. The gauntlets have the enchantments of Fortify Restoration for 8 points, and resist disease for 50%. The light armor has an armor rating of 4, and the heavy is 6. The greaves have the enchantment of Fortify Destruction for 8 points, and Restoration for 5 points. The light armor has an armor rating of 6, and the heavy is 9. The helmet has enchantments of Fortify Restoration for 5 points, and personality for 25 points. The light armor has an armor rating of 4, and the heavy is 6. 
The shield has the enchantment of Reflect Spell for 16%. The light armor has an armor rating of 12, and the heavy is 18. The full armor heavy set has a value of 21,850 gold, and the light has a value of 21,950 gold. Next, we move on to individual pieces of armor. Let's begin with footwear. To begin, we have the boots of the Swift Merchant. These can be acquired from Seed Neus at Northern Goods and Trade in Coral. They are light armor and have the enchantments of Fortify Speed for 5 points, Fortify Mercantile and Speechcraft for 10 points, and an unfortunate curse of weakness to disease and poison for 30 points. They offer an armor rating of 4 and a value of 3,900 gold. Next, we have the Quicksilver Boots. These can be acquired from Paloneria at Divine Elegance in the Imperial City Market District. They are light armor and have the curses of Drain Heavy and Light Armor for 5 points, and the enchantments of Fortify Agility and Speed for 10 points. They have an armor rating of 5.5 and a value of 4,400 gold. Next, we have the Boots of Springheel Jack. These can be acquired by doing the Thieves Guild quest, Boots of Springheel Jack. They are purely aesthetic footwear and offer no armor rating. They do have an enchantment of Fortify Acrobatics for 50 points. They have a value of 5,400 gold. Next, we have Nistor's Boots. These can be acquired from Elsinia at Best Goods and Guarantees in Leowin. These boots are aesthetic wear and offer no armor rating. They do have an enchantment of Fortify Athletics and Speed for 5 points, as well as Water Breathing. They have a value of 4,600 gold. Lastly, for boots, we have the Boots of Bloody Bounding. These boots can be acquired by doing the optional Dark Brotherhood side quest called the Renegade Shadow Scale, given to us by Tainava. These boots are light armor and have the enchantments of Fortify Acrobatics and Blade for 18 points. They have an armor rating of 2 and a value of 3,615 gold. Now we'll move on to Gauntlets and Bracers. First off, we have the Bands of Quang Lao. These are located in the chests near Branwen and Salith in the Arena District of the Imperial City. They are light armor and have the enchantment of Fortify Hand to Hand for 20 points. They have an armor rating of 1 and a value of 2,005 gold. Next, we have the Bands of the Chosen. These can be acquired from Kathutet during the main quest of Paradise. These bracers are light armor and have a curse of weakness to fire for 50%. They have an armor rating of 1 and a value of 0 gold. Next, we have the Fists of the Drunkard. These can be acquired from main lore at the Flowing Bowl in Anvil. They are heavy armor and have the enchantments of Fortify Strength, Endurance, Intelligence, and Willpower for 5 points. They have an armor rating of 5 and a value of 4,400 gold. Then, we have the Gauntlets of Gluttony. These can be acquired from Fjotrid at Hammer and Axe and Bruma. They are heavy armor and have the enchantment of Fortify Strength for 15 points, but the Curse of Drain Health for 30 points. They have an armor rating of 5 and a value of 4,900 gold. Next, we have the Hands of Midnight. These can be acquired from Mirage Dar at the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary in Shadenhall. These are light armor and have the enchantments of Chameleon, Fortify Hand to Hand and Resist Normal Weapons, all for 10 points. They do, however, have a Curse of Sun Damage for 30 points. They have an armor rating of 2.5 and a value of 4,660 gold. Next, we have the Hands of the Atronach. These can be acquired from Kalendil at Mystic Emporium in the Imperial City Market District. They have enchantments of Resist Fire, Frost, and Shock, all for 20 points. They have an overall armor rating of 7 and a value of 7,000 gold. Then we have Rashida Special. These can be acquired from Rashida at Fire and Steel and Coral. They are heavy armor and have enchantments of Fortify Strength and Armorer for 5 points. They have an armor rating of 4.5 and a value of 3,600 gold. Moving on to Unique Greaves and Pants, we have the Monkey Pants. These can be acquired from Surutan at Novaroma and Bruma. They are light armor and offer the enchantments of Fortify Acrobatics and Athletics for 10 points. However, have the Curse of Drain Willpower for 5 points. They have an armor rating of 6 and a value of 3,600 gold. Then we have the Imperial Breaches. The Imperial Breaches can be acquired from Thorinir at the Copious Coin Purse in the Imperial City Market District. They are classified as Pants and have enchantments of Fortify Speechcraft, Personality, and Mercantile all for 5 points. They have no armor rating and a value of 4,000 gold. Now we'll move on to Helmets and Hoods. First off, we have Fin Gleam. Fin Gleam can be found underwater among a pile of bones off the west coast of the island near Anvil. It is light armor and has enchantments of Detect Life for 20 feet, Night Eye, and Water Breathing. It has an armor rating of 4 and a value of 2,401 gold. Next we have the Helm of the Deep Delver. 
Helm of the Deep Delver can be purchased from Tertullian Varus at Three Brothers Trade Goods in the Imperial City Market District. It is heavy armor and has enchantments of light for 60 feet and resist disease and poison for 30%. It does have a curse of drain speed for 5 points. It has an armor rating of 5 and a value of 4,750 gold. Next, we have the Helm of Ferocity. Helm of Ferocity can be acquired from Agnit the Pickled at Hammer and Tongs in Skingrad. It is heavy armor and has enchantments of Fortify Blade, Blunt, and Hand to Hand for 5 points. However, it has the Curse of Drain Intelligence, Willpower, and Personality for 5 points each. It has an armor rating of 7 and a value of 5,500 gold. Then we have the Aeliot Crown of Lindai. The Aeliot Crown of Lindai can be picked up in the Aeliot Ruins of Lindai during the quest, Secrets of the Aeliots. It is light armor and has enchantments of Fortify Alteration and Illusion for 15 points each and resist magic for 35%. It has an armor rating of 0 and a value of 8,350 gold. Next, we have the Aeliot Crown of Nenalata. The Aeliot Crown of Nenalata can be found in Herminia Sinna's house in the Elven Gardens district of the Imperial City during the quest, Secrets of the Aeliots. It is light armor and has enchantments of Fortify Alteration and Conjuration for 15 points as well as Reflect Spell for 25%. It has an armor rating of 0 and a value of 13,100 gold. Then we have the Bloodworm Helm. Bloodworm Helm can be acquired during the Bloodworm Helm quest in the Mage's Guild questline. It is light armor and has an enchantment of Fortify Conjuration for 12 points. It has an armor rating of 4.5 and a value of 1,255 gold. Next, we have the Helm of Orain Bearclaw. The Helm of Orain Bearclaw can be acquired as a reward after completing the Fighter's Guild questline. It is heavy armor and has enchantments of Fortify Agility and Endurance for 10 points. It has an armor rating of 7.5 and a value of 3,350 gold. Then we have the Mask of Clavicus Vile. The Mask of Clavicus Vile can be acquired by completing Clavicus Vile's Daedric Shrine quest. It is heavy armor and has the enchantment of Fortify Personality for 20 points. It has an armor rating of 7.5 and a value of 3,400 gold. Next, we have the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal. The Grey Cowl of Nocturnal can be acquired by completing the Thieves Guild questline. It is classified as a hood and has the enchantments of Detect Life for 120 feet, Fortify Sneak for 25 points, and Feather for 200 points. The wearer also becomes the Grey Fox meaning that all of the crimes committed while wearing it are dismissed as soon as it's removed. It has no armor rating and has no gold value. Then we have the Black Hand Hood. The Black Hand Hood can be acquired when we're promoted to Speaker in the Dark Brotherhood questline or stolen from the homes of Jagasta and Alval Uvani who live in Bruma and Leowin, or it can be looted from the dead members of the Black Hand at the end of the Dark Brotherhood questline, or finally, it can be looted from Lucien Lachance should we decide to kill him upon our first meeting. It is under the classification of a hood and has enchantments of Fortify Blade, Illusion, Marksman, Sneak, and Speechcraft all for 4 points. It has no armor rating and no gold value. Next, we have the Counselor's Hood. The Counselor's Hood is technically not attainable in the base game due to developer issues. However, can be fixed using the unofficial Oblivion patch or gotten by using console commands. It can be bought from Skjorta at Nordwinds in Bruma. It is classified as a hood and has enchantments of Fortify Speechcraft for 10 points and Resist Poison for 25 points. It has no armor rating and a value of 2,475 gold. Next, we have the Cowl of the Druid. The Cowl of the Druid can be acquired from Borba Gra Uzgash at Borba's Goods and Stores in Shadenhall. It is classified as a hood and has enchantments of Detect Life for 40 feet and Fortify Marksman and Alchemy for 5 points. It however does have a curse of Drain Strength for 5 points. It has no armor rating and a value of 3,800 gold. Next we have the Mantle of the Woodsman. The Mantle of the Woodsman can be acquired from Ogir Gyorik at the main ingredient in the Imperial City Market District. It is classified as a hood and has the enchantments of Fortify Speed and Alchemy for 5 points. It however has the curses of Drain Strength and Endurance for 5 points. It has no armor rating and a value of 2,500 gold. Then we have the Veil of the Seer. The Veil of the Seer was meant to be bought from Edgar Votrine at Edgar's Discount Spells. However, no bartering option is available so it can only be acquired through the unofficial Oblivion patch or through console commands. It is classified as a hood and has the enchantments of Detect Life for 60 feet and Fortify Willpower for 5 points. It has no armor rating and a value of 3,800 gold. Next we have the Ancient Blade's Helmet. 
The Ancient Blades helmet can be acquired by defeating and looting any of the four blade champions in the ruins of Sankar Tor. It is heavy armor and has no enchantments. It has an armor rating of 3.5 and a value of 0 gold. Then we have the Ancient Elven Helm. The Ancient Elven Helm can be acquired during the Mage's Guild quest of Vodakin's Secret in the ruins of Vodakin. It is light armor and has no enchantments. It has an armor rating of 4 and a value of 0 gold. Next, we have the Bound Mythic Dawn Helm. The Bound Mythic Dawn Helm cannot be acquired in the base game and can only be accessed through console commands. It is considered heavy armor and has no enchantments. It has an armor rating of 6 and a value of 0 gold. Count Sirion's helmet can be acquired by completing the Ghosts of Vytharn quest in the Shivering Isles DLC. It is heavy armor and if you're level 16, has the enchantments of Fortify Block for 9 points and Fortify Heavy Armor for 8 points. It has an armor rating of 5.75 and a value of 2000 gold. Then we have the Diadem of Euphoria. The Diadem of Euphoria can be looted off of Thaden once he dies in the Shivering Isles DLC. It is light armor and if you're level 16, it has the enchantments of Fortify Magicka for 25 points, Speechcraft for 15 points, and Resist Magicka for 10%. It has an armor rating of 3 and a value of 5,501 gold. Now we'll move on to shields. Starting off, we have the Tower of the Nine. The Tower of the Nine can be acquired from Viator Accius at Stonewall Shields in the Imperial City Market District. It is heavy armor and has enchantments of Fortified Block, Heavy Armor, and Shield for 5 points. It does, however, have a Curse of Drain Light Armor for 10 points. It has an armor rating of 15 and a value of 4,800 gold. Next, we have the Escutcheon of Coral. The Escutcheon of Coral can be acquired as a reward for completing the quest, Sins of the Father. It is heavy armor and has the enchantments of Fortify Endurance for 10 points and Reflect Damage for 35%. It has an armor rating of 22.5 and a value of 17,500 gold. Then we have Valdemar's Shield. Valdemar's Shield can be looted off of an undead blade in the prison zone of Sankar Tor. It is heavy armor and has an enchantment of Reflect Damage for 30% and has an armor rating of 13 and a value of 4,200 gold. Next we have Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker can be acquired by completing Periite's Daedric Shrine quest. It is heavy armor and has the enchantment of Reflect Spell for 30%. It has an armor rating of 17 and a value of 16,500 gold. Then we have the Knights of the Thorn Shield. The Knights of the Thorn Shield can be acquired by looting the bodies of Farwell Indaris or Bremen Senyon if they die during the quest, the Wayward Knight. It is heavy armor and has no enchantments. It has an armor rating of 13.5 and a value of 110 gold. Next, we have the Grey Aegis. The Grey Aegis cannot be acquired in the base game, but instead is wielded against us in the arena by an Altmer combatant. It is heavy armor and has the enchantment of Resist Magic for 100%. It has an armor rating of 13.5 and a value of 15,095 gold. Then we have the Thorn Shield. The Thorn Shield can be acquired as a reward for completing the quest to help a hero in the Shivering Isles DLC. It is heavy armor and if you're level 16, it has the enchantments of Fortify Block for 14 points and Reflect Spell for 16%. It has an armor rating of 13.5 and a value of 7,910 gold. Now we'll move on to cuirasses, robes, one pieces, and general torso wear. Starting off, we have the Aegis of the Apocalypse. Aegis of the Apocalypse can be acquired from Varnado at the best defense in the Imperial City Market District. It is heavy armor and has the enchantments of Fortified Blade, Blunt, and Heavy Armor all for 5 points. It does however have the Curse of Drain Luck for 5 points and Drain Health for 20 points. It has an armor rating of 13.75 and a value of 6,500 gold. Next, we have the Birthrate of Astalon. The Birthrate of Astalon could be acquired from Claudette Peric at the Gilded Carafe in the Imperial City Market District. It is light armor and has the enchantments of Fortify Agility for 5 points and Magicka for 50 points. It has an armor rating of 11 and a value of 8,600 gold. Then we have Dondoran's Juggernaut. Dondoran's Juggernaut can be acquired from Ulfand at Nordwinds in Bruma. It is heavy armor and has the enchantments of Fortify Strength and Endurance for 10 points. It does however have the curses of Drain Speed and Athletics for 10 points each. It has an armor rating of 13 and a value of 6,500 gold. Next, we have the Black Hand Robe. The Black Hand Robe can be acquired by any of the same ways that the Black Hand Hood was acquired through the Dark Brotherhood and its questline. It isn't classified as armor and therefore has no armor rating or armor type. It has the enchantments of Fortify Blade, Illusion, Marksman, Sneak, and Speechcraft for 11 points. 
it has no gold value. Next, we have the Apron of the Master Artisan. The Apron of the Master Artisan could be acquired from Norbert Lels at Lels Quality Merchandise in Anvil. It is classified as clothing and therefore doesn't have an armor rating or type. It has the enchantments of Fortify Alchemy, Armorer, and Security for 7 points. It has a value of 4,000 gold. Then we have the Robe of Creativity. The Robe of Creativity can be acquired from Nilowin at the Fair Deal in Breville. It is classified as clothing and therefore doesn't have an armor rating or armor type. It has the enchantments of Fortify Intelligence and Personality for 5 points. It does however have the Curse of Drain Willpower for 5 points. It has a value of 5,700 gold. Next we have the Vest of the Bard. The Vest of the Bard can be acquired from Gunder at Colovian Traders in Skingrad. It is classified as clothing and therefore doesn't have an armor rating or armor type. It has the enchantments of Fortify Speechcraft and Personality for 5 points. It does however have the Curse of Drain Willpower for 5 points. It has a value of 2,500 gold. Then we have the Apron of Adroitness. The Apron of Adroitness can be acquired as a reward for completing the quest, A Brush with Death. It is considered light armor and has the enchantments of Fortify Agility and Intelligence for 10 points each. It has an armor rating of 12.5 and a value of 3,800 gold. Next we have the Kavach Kyrus. The Kavach Kyrus can be acquired as a reward from Savli and Mattius after completing the quest, The Battle for Castle Kavach. It is light armor and has the enchantments of Fortify Endurance and Strength for 8 points each. It has an armor rating of 7.5 and a value of 1,780 gold. Then we have Mankar Cameron's Robes. Mankar Cameron's Robes can be looted off of him after his defeat during the main quest of Paradise. It is classified as a robe and therefore has no armor rating or type. It has the enchantments of Reflect Damage for 10% and Spell Absorption for 20 points. It has a value of 12,010 gold. Next we have the Robe of the Apprentice. The Robe of the Apprentice can be acquired as a reward for completing all of the Mage's Guild recommendations. It is classified as a robe and therefore has no armor rating or type. It has the enchantment of Fortify Willpower for 6 points and a value of 0 gold. Then we have the Robe of the Conjurer. The Robe of the Conjurer can be acquired as a reward after completing the Mage's Guild quest, Vodakin Secret. It is classified as a robe and therefore has no armor rating or type. It has the enchantments of Fortify Intelligence, Willpower, Conjuration, and Destruction for 10 points. It has no gold value. Then we have Deceiver's Finery. The Deceiver's Finery can be acquired as a bonus reward for completing the Dark Brotherhood quest, Bad Medicine. It is classified as an outfit and therefore has no armor rating or type. It has the enchantments of Fortify Speechcraft and Personality for 18 points. It has a value of 3,630 gold. Next, we have the Savior's Hide. The Savior's Hide can be acquired as a reward for completing Hircine's Daedric Shrine quest. It is light armor and has the enchantment of Resist Magic for 25%. It has an armor rating of 12 and a value of 6,250 gold. Next, we have the Armor of Tiber Septim. The Armor of Tiber Septim can be acquired in the Ruins of St. Cartor and is actually needed for the main quest. It is heavy armor and has no enchantments. It has an armor rating of 11.25 and a value of 190 gold. Then we have the Bound Mythic Dawn Armor. The Bound Mythic Dawn Armor is not available in the base game and can only be accessed through console commands. It is heavy armor and has no enchantments. It has an armor rating of 20 and a value of 0 gold. Next, we have the Emperor's Curus. It is identical in appearance to the Imperial Dragon Curus and the armor of Tiber Septum. The Emperor's Curus is worn by Brother Martin during the quest, Defense of Bruma, and is his only armor piece that's enchanted. It is heavy armor and it has the enchantments of Reflect Damage and Spell for 50% as well as Fortify Health for 50 points. It has an armor rating of 18.75 and a value of 0 gold. Next, we have the Leather Curus. This specific Leather Curus can be looted off of the Blackwater Brigands during the quest, An Unexpected Voyage. It is light armor and has no enchantments. It has an armor rating of 8.25 and a value of 160 gold. Then we have the Arena Raiment. The Arena Raiment can be acquired by signing up to fight in the arena. It comes in both light and heavy armor options and has the enchantments of Fortify Personality for 2 points and Athletics for 5 points. The light armor has an armor rating of 10 and the heavy has a rating of 15. Both have values of 0 gold. Next, we have the Raiment of Valor. The Raiment of Valor can be acquired after defeating the Grand Champion in the arena. 
It comes in light and heavy armor options and has the enchantments of Fortify Personality, Athletics, Health, and Fatigue for 10 points. The light armor has an armor rating of 15 and the heavy armor has a rating of 20. Both have a value of 100 gold. Agronax Raiment is identical to the Heavy Raiment of Valor and can be looted after his defeat. Those are all of the unique and leveled armor pieces that can be acquired in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, with the exceptions of a few unique and interesting additions. There's definitely some entries in this list that were stretches for unique and leveled, but I appreciate you letting me add them in for fun to talk about them. Is there something that I missed on this list? Let me know down below. Until next time, keep on adventuring.